What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can run more creative routes. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it can teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want a daily training schedule with all the things you should do in the gym and on the field to improve your wide receiver skills specifically, check out that very first link below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. We give you eight weeks of exercises, drills with sets, reps, rest days, conditioning days, the work. So check out that very first link below if you want to improve your skills for an eight-week program. Let's get started. So now we are actually going to be looking at a bad example of Justin Jefferson running a route in a second where the DB was able to kind of predict what he does. But this first route kind of sets up what I'm talking about. So he's going to be running this rocker step post. So what is a rocker step? So I'm sure a lot of you know this, and this is a way to be very creative with your routes, very creative and not just be a basic receiver, right? So if I'm running a post, normally you'd be cutting off a what foot in this scenario. You'd be cutting off your right foot. So a rocker step is essentially not just cutting off your right foot, but doing a left-right cut. So you're kind of faking like you're running a corner, running an out route, something to the outside. And this is something that Justin Jefferson does a lot. Um, you know, guys like Devontae Adams do this, Keenan Allen, all, all the best route runners add this to their game. Cooper Cup, who's we're going to be looking at later. But he does this rocker step, and it's something that he always does. So he goes here, inside fake one, Outside fake two, DB jumps, and he's able to create separation. Great move to get open on like a post, a corner, an out, or a dig. Now, this next clip we're going to be showing here, I'm going to play this full speed. Next clip is going to be an interception based off of this rocker step and how this DB was able to predict it. So this is Darius Slay, and this is the game from Monday night where Justin Jefferson is running this route. So he's going to be running this post. Now, pay very close attention to this rocker step. He goes one, two, but Slay's able to sit to the inside and pick this thing off. Now, a cardinal sin is that you don't want to change. Like, if it's like a quick post, you do not want to try to go around this guy. Because a quick post is a timing throw for the quarterback. And so if that quarterback expects you to slip under and you slip over, he's essentially throwing that right to the DB. But now some of you might ask, well, hey, coach, I thought that rocker step would work in this case. You know, he sold it. His hips and shoulders went to the outside. He had a good first move. He had a good second move. He's stepping outside the DB's frame. This is how we can be creative as wide receivers. We cannot be predictable. So against going up against DBs every single week, you know, you got guys who study film. If you're in high school youth ball, you have DB coaches who study a lot of film. And just like every other guy, every other coach, they're looking for tendencies. What's his tendency when he runs a post route? What's his tendency when he runs a corner route? So they know that this rocker step is going to be coming. So when he runs this route and, this, and Darius Slay sees that he does this inside fake, outside fake, he's sitting on this thing because he's seen it before. Now, you might ask, well, how do I combat that? How do I come back and give him something different? How do I create separation if he essentially is guessing what I am doing? And that's what we're going to show in a second here from Cooper Cup. So we have to make sure that we are unpredictable with my movements, and I have to pair these moves that I use, whether it's off the line or at the top of the route together. So let's play this full speed, and then we're going to show a great example of Cooper Cup using this. So again, Darius Slate pretty much just predicted that route, knew what he was going to run, and that's a byproduct of studying film and knowing your opponent. So now we got Cooper Cup here. Very similar situation. Reduced split. He's at the top of the numbers. Here's the tight end. Very similar formation to Justin Jefferson. Now, I know it's a different wide receiver, but Cooper Cup loves to use that rocker step. He will use that rocker step pretty much on every single break, but there's a different element to it. So let's play this full speed. So he comes off here and he does what we call a triple rocker step, where he does a one, two, three. This is how you are unpredictable, fellas. Because like, imagine this. I'm not saying Justin Jefferson does this, but I know a lot of wide receivers do. That every single time they run a post, they do a rocker step. Like if they're lined up on the left side, they'll step with the right, step with the left, and then break on the post. Every single time. Now, if I'm a smart DB, and I know that, you're, that you do that every single time, as soon as I see that in a game, I'm going right to the side of the break. That is very, very predictable. So now when you watch Cooper Cup do this movement and he does this move, he goes one inside fake, two, three. So that looks like he's doing a rocker step post, but really he's putting the brakes on on that third step. And you see how we get the DB to jump to the inside. We get some separation and we're able to run this out route. So this is something you can do every single time you run an out route. Maybe a couple times you run an out route, you just break off a one foot. Maybe you do a post route, you do that rocker step. Maybe you do another out route and you go one, two, three and break it off. 
That's three different ways that all look the same. And that's how you're unpredictable. Because when a DB has to rely on his technique, that is when we should win. Because essentially, like, let's go back to that Justin Jefferson clip. Where's a DB supposed to be watching? He's supposed to be watching his hips, right? So if a DB is watching a wide receiver's hips and he doesn't move like this, where he does this one, two, and his hips and shoulders are selling to the outside, what should he be doing? He should essentially, in theory, based on all the stuff that we talk about, be jumping to the outside. His hips are going there. He's threatened by the out route and we could win on the post, but he doesn't because he's seen this before, because he predicted this, because we gave it away. This is how we run a lot of our post routes. A smart DB will pick that up. So Cooper Cup does the exact opposite. When you watch all of his film, dude, every single time, it's either one cut, a one, two, or a one, two, three, because then the DB has to rely on his technique. Then he has to watch your hips. He has no tell on what I am doing. And that's what it comes down to being a creative route runner. You cannot give that DB a tell on our movements. So let's play this thing full speed one more time. So I hope you guys can understand that. I hope that kind of sheds some light that you need to make your routes look the same. If you expect to get separation, you need to build off of the routes that you run. Okay. So now, this next clip here, we're going to be showing from Stefan Diggs. So the main thing now when it comes to being a creative route runner is you got to know how to structure your routes, not only against man coverage, but also against zone coverage. And know that just because it's a different type of coverage, the leverage responsibilities of a DB does not change. So Diggs is going to be running this deep post. This is the touchdown that he caught from this past Monday's game. So let's play at full speed. So instead of just running the post, he kind of angles his stem at that DB's blind spot. Right, So this is, I, I don't know if I would consider this too much like a corner post where he actually is like breaking to it. I think it's more of just like a stem and kind of threatening him to the blind spot rather than actually running a full corner post. If he was running a corner post, he wouldn't have taken like the inside stem. It's more of just like a, like he stems in, stems out, and then pushes back up vertical on the post. It's just a way to threaten this DB's leverage. So when we come off here and we have a DB who's lined up outside shade, He's lined up outside shade. What's he trying to do? He's trying to force everything to the inside. He's trying to force Diggs to his safety help. He's got help to the inside. He wants him to just take off and go run the post, go run the dig, because he has help there. So if this were off man coverage, we would know that what would you do on a post route? You would go attack his leverage, right? You go run at him. You kind of angle your stem outside, get him to widen and go. But now what a lot of people will do, a lot of wide receivers, as soon as they see zone, and they see this DB looking to the inside, he's outside shade, he's kind of bailing out of there, they'll just take what he gives you. They'll just go run. But when you just go run, you have to know that that's what the DB wants. He wants you to just run inside because now he could get onto your hip and he could squeeze you to his help. And it's essentially almost double coverage. So to get that separation, to one, create a bigger window for your post from the safety over here, and to get this corner to widen off, you have to know how to angle your step. Now, this was probably built into the play, I would say. I would say if you were drawing this thing up, it would be inside stem, outside stem, then post. But it's about attacking that blind spot and about threatening that leverage. So he comes off here. You see how he goes here. He's attacking the blind spot of the DB, trying to get that DB to open up, trying to get him to try to break on an out route, break on a corner route, and that can get him off balance. When you threaten his leverage, he has to keep his leverage. Outside shade, outside zone, his sole purpose is to not let anybody get outside. Do not let him run a fade and slip behind because he does not have help over there. But by simply angling that stem, getting that DB to widen, that creates a bigger window and that gets some separation from this DB so he has no chance to make a play downfield. That is very, very creative route running right there. And you have to know to be a creative route runner, you got to understand the leverage responsibilities of DBs and what they are trying to prevent and what they are trying to do. Let's play this thing full speed one more time. Great job by Diggs threatening the blind spot, angling that stem to create separation and win over the top on that deep post. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, um, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. If you have any other video suggestions as well, we always, always appreciate it. And again, fellas, if you'd like a full eight-week wide receiver on-field and gym workout schedule, over 500-plus drills and gym exercises for you to do, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.